Welcome to our discussion of scientific realism, Kitcher versus von Frossen. According to Kitcher, von Frossen claims that realism aims at a true description of observables. And as we've seen, this is pretty much what von Frossen says. But for Kitcher, realism is not just about the aims of science, it's also about its achievements. According to Kitcher, science achieves the following. First, it discovers concepts that pick out natural kinds. Now we haven't really talked about natural kinds very much, but a natural kind is supposed to be a pre-existing category of things. So for example, when Kitcher says that concepts pick out natural kinds, what he has in mind is that, say, the concept electron picks out a pre-existing category of things which really are electrons. Science also achieves two other things. First, it arrives at schemata that capture objective dependencies. And here we can see the connection to Kitcher's account of scientific explanation. These schemata are the argument patterns that capture the way in which things are related to one another so that we can use these same patterns of reasoning for explaining a wide variety of different phenomena. Finally, Kitcher says, but science also achieves or arrives at significant statements that are true. For Kitcher, realism is not really about aiming for truth concerning observable reality. As he says, a sober realist does not really need or want the whole truth. Because if we did have the whole truth, even only about observables, we would be mired in details. We need to be selective in our attempts to understand reality and not try to achieve the complete detailed truth even about observables. Kitcher's overall criticism of von Frossen is really about von Frossen's epistemology. Kitcher tells us that according to von Frossen we cannot have knowledge of unobservables. Recall von Frossen's observability guide for avoiding fallacies. Von Frossen says X is observable if there are circumstances under which if X were present to us we could observe it. However, according to Kitcher, this guide for avoiding fallacies actually leads to very counterintuitive results. If we use von Frossen's guide, what we Notice is that von Frossen seems to be focusing on the concept of physical possibility. We've talked about this in class when we say, you know, if X were present to us, it would be observable, right? The notion of possibility that seems to be at stake here is that it would be physically possible to observe it. That there are circumstances that make it physically possible for us to observe the thing in question. However, if that's what you use as your criteria for what counts as observable or unobservable, then you end up with conclusions such as the following, says Kitcher. The dinosaurs and other extinct organisms are unobservable because the only way that we would find dinosaurs to be observable is if it were possible to travel back in time. But time travel is physically impossible. So there seems to be something deeply suspicious, according to Kitcher, in the way that von Frossen uses the concept of the physical possibility seems to be in how his guide von Frossen for avoiding treats fallacies. our knowledge of unobservables. According to Kitcher, von Frossen claims that if we have a theory of unobservables, that's TU, combined with a collection of statements about observables, that's O, then accepting the combination of the theory of unobservables plus the collection of statements about observables is more risky, according to von Frossen, than merely accepting the collection of statements about observables. But for Kitcher, this is really not the right comparison. When we try to decide what we should accept in our scientific theories, we don't compare, on the one hand, merely the statements about observables with, on the other hand, the statements about observables in conjunction with a theory of unobservables. 
Instead, the comparisons we actually make in scientific practice are about comparing, on the one hand, a theory of, a, of unobservables in conjunction with a collection of statements about observables, with, on the other hand, a different theory of unobservables in conjunction with the same collection of statements about observables. Overall, when we compare scientific theories in this way, that is, on the one hand, one theory of unobservables with a collection of statements about observables, as opposed to, on the other hand, a different theory, TU prime, about unobservables with the same collection of statements about observables, what we use, says Skitcher, are exactly the same scientific standards as when we judge the acceptability of statements about observables. So there aren't two different epistemic standards, one for observables and one for unobservables. Instead, we just use the same types of judgments in accepting a bundle or a collection of statements both about observables and unobservables with another collection of statements both about unobservables and observables. And so overall, from Kitcher's point of view, Van Frossen's epistemology is deeply flawed.